Hello everyone, welcome to a new video in the Game Creator Basics series. Today we'll be having a look at the Melee module. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So we're back in our basic scene with um, no other modules loaded. So we're going to import the Melee module and if you don't have it installed yet, you'll need to download it first. We'll click import, then again we'll go to the module manager and we're going to enable both the melee module as well as melee examples. And these examples contain a lot of basic prefabs already, uh, animations, sounds, etc. So incredibly useful. So let's have a look at the actual scene. There we go. And if we hit play here, you'll see that we can uh, move around and we're automatically locked on the enemy as well. And we have some blocking and as you can see we have a perfect parry as well which can be set up as counter and we have defense and poise um, and as you can see my poise was low so I'm getting knocked back and defense um, if I uh, don't get my ass kicked defense is basically a stat that can lower as well and I, I'm not really getting it but basically um, there's a limit to how much you can block um, before you know your guard breaks so a lot of uh, a lot of the good mechanics are in here so we have perfect parry we have um, you know the, which can be set up as counters as well we have uh, poise we have you know guard breaks so a lot of good stuff so let's have a look at how all of this actually works now the big difference is is that in the scene uh, itself we won't be able to do all that much um, as most of the melee module really resides in other components. So let's do a small trigger here and um, we can do a uh, input key down and let's do E. There we go. Do a small condition Add another clause. So here when we go to melee we can have um, draw which is going to be somewhere here draw weapon and this is where you select the weapon you want to draw. Now I'm going to go into the shield component a bit more because as you can see there's no shield. Uh, there is a shield here but we don't actually need to equip that and I'll explain in a bit why. Um, we can then copy this over um, well, we don't need to actually, and we will look up the sheath, there we go, and then in the if condition, we have, um, is character armed, we'll go to unarmed, is armed, and there we go. So now when I hit play, I'm going to press, um, E, and nothing is going to happen, of course, um, because the player needs to component as well which is the character melee component there we go as you can see we also have our uh, poise um, max poise and recovery rates here and again we'll go over in a bit how that works and I press E um, automatically have my sword equipped and yeah you know that's uh, that's all of the basics then obviously we can add another trigger and we'll do input, uh, again key down, oh, no, let's do mouse down actually, mouse down, left, and we'll just do uh, input melee, and we have E, A, B, uh, etc. We'll just do A. Now if I click the mouse down now, nothing happens, if I equip the sword, you can see um, you know, I'm doing attacks. Now the interesting thing is that we only have one action here of key A, 
But as you can see, if I press it multiple times, um, with, le with no delay basically, we're doing different attacks. And that's really the strength of the melee module um, is the combo system. So let's have a look at how that actually works. So let's head over to the sword weapon. And this is the sword weapon component. And as you can see, there's tons of stuff here. Now, all of these are just clips, um, basically. Um, so these, every clip, and we'll have a look at those as well, um, contains an animation, but it does more than just, um, you know, add an animation. As you can see here, we have the combo creator. And the reason why when I pressed A a couple of times, so as you can see, A, double A, triple A, is um, you know something different happened because we basically have multiple attacks and yeah that's how you create the combos um, yes you can create tons more so you can you know create a true fighter out of this you know depending on what you want to do but yeah there's a there's a ton you can do and as you can see it's literally that easy just press a button at a condition, so on air, after block, after perfect block, running forward, backwards, input forward, input backwards. So really, really cool stuff. Um, so yeah, we have uh, a ton of different things uh, here. Now I'm just going to look at one clip um, for this moment. Now these are different types of clips. These are reactions, which we'll have a look at as well. And this is basically what a melee clip looks like. Now the really cool thing here is that we can actually drag our player in here. And we can press preview as well. And then we can have a look at the clip, which is incredibly cool. Now there's a practical reason for this as well. Um, as you can see, we have three different um, you know, colors here. And you can uh, you know, drag these around and, you know, change them um, but basically what those parts are is that's the active part and the active part means when the sword actually can damage the object or you know enemy completely depending on what you want to damage and basically only in the active part will the sword actually um, you know have a hit reaction so, you know, what actually happens depends on what you want as well. But only in this active part, something will happen. Now, the recovery part uh, is important as well. So that's how long you have for recovery um, in order to co continue the combo and go on to the next one. Now, the shortest is if this would be really short, for example, and it would be like this. If I would press A again here, the new animation would already start at this point, which is, you know, really fast. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And yeah, you can just, you know, change it. And as you can see with the preview, it's easy to guess like, okay, this is where he attacks. So um, this is where I'm going to go. And it should still be active here and we'll drag it here. And that's pretty much it. Now we can have a couple of things happen on uh, hit and execute as well. One thing I would keep in mind is um, not to add any damage aspects on the on hit. Um, because then it will always damage no matter if you are um, if the enemy is blocking yes or no so something to keep in mind um, but you can add you know blood splatter particle effects whatever you want to do or something entirely different now we have sound effects um, we have movement multiplier because that's important as well one of the uh, things as you can see here is extract root motion and that means that yes we can root, use root motion in melee clips which is incredibly important and a welcome addition to game creator in general as by default there's no root motion now if we have uh, a look at the clip here as you can see root motion here is turned off and the animation does have it but it is not turned on in the clip which is really important it shouldn't be otherwise it's gonna move like double the amount so make sure that's turned off um, but then in the actual clip itself uh, we can have it turned on which is uh, you know obviously really important with movements like this so yeah that's uh, that's really cool a um, couple of important things here um, is this an attack yes or no can this be blocked yes or no now why would it not be, you know why would you not be able to block it if it's a finisher or some special attack or some 
I don't know, magic attack, whatever you want. Um, defense damage, poise damage, which we discussed before. And basically, can it be interrupted? Yes or no. Again, for finishers, um, you want to want that to be interrupted. Uh, same here, vulnerable or invincible. You want to want to be, uh, you know, be killed during your uh, finisher, which would be kind of lame. And posture, uh, posture, steady or stagger, um, which is related to the other part, and that's um, the hit reactions. So as you can see, hit reactions here, we have stagger. And um, the reason for that being, um, which you cannot preview by the way, um, because this is not an attack, so this is simply, uh, you know, when you get hit, what happens. Again, we have all of the same effect, uh, things here as well. Some transitions for blending the animations. Um, but yeah, those are all of, the, all of the big parts with the clips really. So when it comes to the actual weapon, um, you know, outside of having all of the, the sound effects and impacts, we have one really important thing, which is the actual prefab. So let's have a look at that prefab. And you can choose where to attach it to, which is nice as well. So you can, uh, you know, attach it to uh, his foot or something like that. And um, this is the actual prefab of the sword. Now, as you can see, there's no collider here, which is the important part. Um, we're not using a collider. And that active moment I was talking about, that's the blade component. So I'm going to uh, going to show you in uh, in play what that actually looks like. And let me actually add another input here, just for demonstration purposes. So trigger, uh, key down, uh, F. There we go. Um, we'll also do input melee, and that's simply so I can uh, easily pause. And yeah, this is the important part. So here we have the slash component. So let's have a look. So as you can see, we have a trail material, which is slash, which is the blue um, part you can see here. And we're in the active part right now, which is where that really big box that I was uh, showing before in the prefab becomes red. Now the red part is when you can actually um, hit someone. Now why is this important? Now for example you'll be walking around with your sword and you don't want it to automatically just damage everything it touches. Um, would be kind of lame. Maybe realistic but still really really lame. Um, so yeah, you know, quite, <laughs> quite important really. So that's the that part. And as you can see now, this is the inactive part and then the red turns off and um, it just becomes a, you know, a transparent box. So when having a look at um, this part, we can uh, shape it like a box, a sphere, a segment, and segment is basically just a, a line going here. Now the reason box might be, um, might be the best thing to do is Yes, it would be realistic to have it exactly the size of the sword. In reality, um, in actual combat, that's um, that's going to be really hard. Animations would need to match perfectly, and it's uh, it's just safer to have it being a, a big box here. Now we have a couple of events uh, we can do here as well, which is nice. It's good to have these options, and here we can uh, well, you know, resize replace, move the box, etc, uh, etc. Et so really cool stuff and really important yet again, um, no collider. So don't add a collider, um, it should just be a mesh. Now one thing I would like to highlight is that as you can, um, as we saw before when we uh, go back here, we can only attach it to the right hand and um, well basically you can't attach it to multiple um, limbs. Um, if you want to do that, there is something on the Game Creator Hub and I would recommend checking out my Brawler series um, which actually goes into using that uh, plugin from the Game Creator Hub to have components on um, you know multiple limbs, each limb even if you want that. 
Um, so you can basically have combos that have, you know, hands, feet, uh, sword in the right hand, whatever you want. So, uh, yeah, definitely have a look at that. It really uh, enhances the melee module, so pretty much worth it. Um, when it comes to the character state, one little thing I'd like to mention. Um, when we dr um, when I pressed E and we, you know, we're drawing the sword, um, it was switching immediately. Um, you know, there was no fancy animation. Um, but you can easily just add those um, by adding a enter and exit clip. Make sure to mask these as well, because um, otherwise if you're walking, um, you know, it'll just be dragging the feet. So put a mask here that masks the, the lower body and uh, yeah, you're good basically. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty nice. Now one other thing I'd like to mention is as you can see, um, we don't actually need to draw a shield here. And the reason you can do that um, is because you can have, you know, swap shields basically. Um, but the shield you can just automatically uh, equip on the sword. Now this one doesn't have a physical shield and it doesn't have to have a physical shield. In this case the shield is simply the sword, um, which is, you know, cool. Um, so yeah, the, the sword is, uh, you know, is what is used for blocking. And basically shield in this case just means, you know, block. Um, yes, you can have them as separate objects obviously, but you don't have to do that. Um, which is uh, which I think is pretty cool. Again, we have a couple of clips here. Um, it is important to fill in all of these uh, clips, otherwise you might get some errors um, because you know the perfect block system, parry, etc. All of that is still active in the game. Um, so if you don't fill in those clips, uh, it might not work well. Now, if you don't want that knockback animation, just drag in the you know for example here. Um, then just drag in a normal hit reaction and, you know, poise won't be, uh, won't have any real effect. But I think it's pretty cool that it's there. Um, when it comes to the shield, again, really simple. So um, we can add an attachment prefab to the, to the left hand if we want to. Um, impact, uh, impact block, um, you know, same, same things here. We can add some uh, sound effects as well. Um, we have a state, default state again, and we can uh, change these values for maximum defense. And, um, you know, poise is actually on the, on the character here, but the defense is on the shield. So yeah, a couple of things that are uh, separated. But again, um, really cool. Uh, I think the melee module is definitely one of the best works, mostly just because, you know, it adds root motion. We have the combo system, which honestly is just amazing. And, uh, you know, we can do counters, parries, etc. So if you want to learn a bit more about what, you know, you can truly do with the melee module, I cover it a lot and definitely recommend checking out the Brawler series. Um, it shows, you know, how to get a lot more out of the module. So really good stuff. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.